Mason, it's that time of year again. <laughs> um, seems like we have this conversation every year. That yeah. This, this happens. Pedro goes away and you step in. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling heading into this game? Yeah, I'm feeling ready as always. Uh, like you said, that time of year again. Uh, and just looking forward to proving myself this weekend and uh, making the most of the opportunity. Obviously, these are opportunities, uh, as Austin just mentioned, that usually come when uh, Pedro leaves. Uh, obviously, you, you work with, with Pedro uh, on a daily basis with Cesar as well. How, how do you kind of uh, prepare for, for for these types of scenarios where you know that when Pedro's gone, you have to kind of fill in and you have to be already mentally, physically um, ready for, for this type of challenge? Yeah, it's tough when you don't get uh, regular game reps because, uh, you know, just seeing the live actions and decisions of the game. But it's just something you work every day like you are going to play. And I'm not here on the training field or in the gym or whatever it might be doing video. So I'm always preparing like I'm going to play on the weekend. So it's, it's nothing new. It's just the fact that I actually am scheduled to start this weekend. So you got to love when these games fall at home as well. Uh, as a goalkeeper, you know, we see Pedro kind of get the wall going. You do as well. How much does it, you know, feel to have those guys behind you supporting you? Uh, you know, especially in those crunch time moments in the game. No, 100%. Um, there was uh, the Cal Cavalry game uh, earlier this season at home. Uh, after we score, I can't remember what goal it was, but uh, I think it was our second one, maybe or maybe our third. But you know, turn around to the wall and they're just going crazy, and it's loud as you know, loud as could be. It uh, you know, it's a really uh, great feeling to have those guys behind you and uh, especially when you make a big save or a big play or something they're right there so it's really nice to have them behind you. Looking at Austin FC now and I mean last time this team played Austin was at Austin it was mm -hmm. a very dramatic ending to the game. Yeah it was. Um, <laughs> to say the least um, now you guys get a little bit of revenge a couple of years later at yep. home uh, what are you kind of looking from them uh, in terms of this matchup? Yeah like you said it's been uh, what two years now since we played them and that game was pretty uh <laughs> like you said, dramatic ending to it. So uh, it's going to be nice. Hopefully, you can get three points at home and, and, you know, obviously beat Austin, but, you know, start to get things going as far as the regular season here in the MLS for or Orlando City. So looking at the form of the team from your vantage point, what needs to change for you guys to start getting the results that, you know, people expect from this team and, and you know, that you guys want and expect for yeah. yourselves. Yeah, Oscar talked to, has talked about it a lot in our uh, our meeting, team meetings, video meetings. Just gotta focus on, uh, you know, continue to to focus on our game model, the way we play, the way we defend, the way we attack, the way we pass the ball, press, all you know, all those type of things. If we get back to doing what we know how to do and executing it well, then uh, the results will take care of themselves. Just following up on that question, is, is there a sense of urgency to get that first win of the season, especially? Uh, yeah, I think there's always a sense of urgency to win every game. You know, this, people talk about, you know, you get down to decision day or, you know, 33rd game of the year and, like, all these three points really matter, but they're all mathematically worth the same, you know. So if you just look, focus on every game as a, you know, there's 34 individual one-game seasons, then, you know, I think then you can focus as much as you possibly can and for the best result and three points every time you go out there. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Mason. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. 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 Austin. All right, Oscar. Um, this time a week without having two games. Um, mm -hmm. How's it feel heading into this week, knowing that you have a full week to prepare, uh, especially at home? Uh, good, good. We I had a chance to have a, a couple extra days uh, to add to our trainings and uh, preparing the game. It's, it's healthier, and I hope that we can. Uh, use it obviously to get a result that is very necessary but uh, most importantly at this point as well is that we can yell together and, and we can add uh, times and training and games uh, w with players that add to your roster so we're, we're good we're, we're taking uh, advantage of uh, this time during the week Oscar mm -hmm. when you watch the film what needs to change for your team to get the results that you guys expect from yourselves? I think it's a bunch of things, not uh, particularly one. Uh, obviously, with the uh, amount of goals that we have conceded, oh, defensively we need to be much better. But I don't accuse that as a one player or, a, or one side. I just think that collectively, as, as well as when we advance, we collectively score goals. I think we have to be uh, sharper. We start from the individual analysis, uh, but uh, surely this is a collective uh, systematic thing that needs to be better. 
and uh, how we can uh, take care of our transitions, how can we uh, take care of those zooling and, and things like that. So we have been very precise individually, but as I say, uh, starting from, from the way we uh, shape the team up, uh, we need to get better on that side. And we have been more lethal as well on the other side of the field. So this team uh, uh, become one of uh, uh, teams that score goals. And, and now we have, we have been dry in the last few but we we work in boys understand it obviously it hasn't been the the ideal start to the mls season you guys are still looking for that first mls win mm -hmm. um, i guess how do you kind of in a way just forget about these past results and try to go into the saturday's game with a fresh mind and, and to try to get those three points uh, i'm pretty sure you guys are, are looking mm -hmm. to get i i have i have been here before I have been in all the sides on on the pitch, outside the pitch. So uh, we have 30 games to go. Uh, is this a time for make an analysis? Mm, I don't think so. I think this is a time for us to rejoin and try to get points and win games. But most importantly for me is that uh, we get the players back that we can train together, that we can play with the roster that, uh, that we're counting with. Uh, I can't wait to do it again because it has been a big challenge for that. Uh, in terms of uh, our analysis, it's a very difficult moment and, and I feel for our fans. Uh, and our fans, is uh, when I think about them and just uh, seeing the lack of results and now we we respect that, but we're we're pushing. This is this is the starting of the journey, so uh, is it time for analysis? I don't think so. Mira. Nosotros tenemos un, un grupo de jugadores muy, muy leales y muy fuertes. Yo, yo pienso que ese grupo es un regalo de Dios que tenemos porque tienen un profesionalismo tremendo. Siento mucho por los fans, siento mucho por ellos, pero esta es la realidad de, de la competencia. Hoy no estamos sacando resultados, llevamos tres partidos seguidos perdidos y esa es nuestra realidad. Tenemos que salir de esa como lo hemos hecho antes. Los, tor los torneos no se ganan en, en, en marzo, los torneos se ganan en diciembre. Y, y ya, los, ya, ya lo vivimos eso. O sea, el, el año pasado, eh, eh, no quiero hablar de eso, pero el año pasado también estábamos muy miserables al inicio. Y terminamos siendo eh, el segundo mejor equipo con 63 puntos. Yo no quisiera otra vez que pasara eso. Yo no quisiera que estuviéramos otra vez porque estaba muy ilusionado con la pretemporada que hicimos, pero la realidad es que hoy no estamos ganando. As you look at this uh, upcoming game this weekend against Austin, it's been a couple of years since you last played them. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots changed since then. Um, how do you kind of prepare against a team that you know you don't play very often and right. uh, it's it's kind of a one and done for a couple of years? Right, right. No, the same. There is not too much uh, uh, changes on the methodology and the way we systematically just prepare the game. It's just that you don't know them much or uh, you don't face them much during the year. But uh, with the technology and everything is known now. It's not like uh, there's any secret. So I guess that they they have all our games and they know how we play it and then we do as well. <laughs> we see. So, I mean, they still play the same way that they did the last time you faced them. Uh, what are you expecting from to see from Austin and, and the challenges that they present? They are in players. We have uh, pace. Uh, and uh, it seems for me that they are navigating the same journey that we are. It's like a trying to settle with things. So uh, it's very interesting uh, to see how... Uh, at this stage of the year, 
there are teams that are more settled and then others are finding our ways. And I think uh, our scene is similar. Just to follow up on that question, uh, I was just looking at the, the Austin's last few games. They're a team, obviously, that's, that's scoring uh, a lot of goals in the last few games. Um, you mentioned how the, the team used to be defensively tight, uh, mm -hmm. obviously because of recent performance for you guys. But this is a team that scores pretty late as well in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something you guys discussed over in the film about mm -hmm. how this team can be dangerous in the, in the in the later portions of the game and how mentally focused, dialed in you have to be in? Uh, right, yeah, no, we do. Uh, at this point in, 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 in this uh, game, uh, we, we have a bunch of information. Like uh, every coach's desk is full of data and, and, and things. It's just how we prioritize is the right word. Uh, what's the most important and and I don't want my players to go to the field so fearful I want them to go confident oh, hey Oscar we suck man we suck but we're good we're good Cesar how's he looking with we're waiting <laughs> we're waiting uh, we're waiting yeah and thanks for supporting, and thanks to the fans. I, I, I know, uh, but but this is this guy. We need to find our way. The players are working hard, and you, you should be proud of them. They will bounce back. I want to ask you about Luis Muriel uh, playing underneath the striker. We saw from the start against Atlanta, it looked like a real offensive hub for you guys. How have you felt about his adaptation to the mm. team, and where you might best use him? Uh, I like it. I, I I think it's very encouraging to see. Uh, how uh, how threat he can be for our teams from that position. And what happened is that that in the in the in the paper it looks so good, but we had to make it happen in the pitch, right? So we all imagine a bunch of things, but this uh, game is so cruel. It's not just what we think. It's just that training first, let him used to the things, and let him connect right. And then don't forget that there is another phase of the game that is not when you don't have the ball. And players need to interiorize it and then put it together, gel it together, and then we can see. So at this point, we are adjusting them up with our model, our system. But certainly that Luis is a very good threat for us up for the opponents when we played him in that position. So we can use him at front or we can use him on their knee. And he's understanding the responsibilities of the position too. So I'm optimistic. How's it guys? Good day. Perfect. Cruz out. Switch.